everyone, I'm Lizzie. I'm a stand-up comedian, AKA the scum of the arts world. Uh, it's okay, we know our place at the bottom of the pile with the magicians, just one up from the jugglers and one down from the party clowns. It's, it's fine, it's okay. Our topic today, art is everywhere. I think could not be more appropriate for my art form, uh, but it, I, I need to acknowledge, it does feel weird saying art form, talking about stand-up comedy. I can just imagine all the other comics saying, oh my God, Lizzie who went on the ABC talking about comedy as art, lame. Uh, although I guess technically a comedy is art, but we're, we're not quite ready to call it that yet. We're too cool. Right? We're trying to be relatable so we don't want to appear all high and mighty and call it art, okay? Uh, we, we might be more confident, I think, to call it art uh, once our category starts being eligible for arts grants. <laughs> in, the, in the meantime, we'll just keep working away, scribbling down our little notes, hoping there'll be art one day. Uh, we, <laughs> we do see inspiration everywhere. And, and before gigs, you know, you'll see comedians in green rooms, which is often just a dirty kitchen in a bar, uh, poring over our notes in our phones or in our little notebooks. Uh, some good ones, a lot of not so good ones that will never be told again. And we'll ask each other, is this anything? Before going out to the audience, asking essentially the same thing. Uh, here's a note that I just wrote down today uh, in my phone. It says, inner city hitchhiker, Soviet taxi, cabs for everyone. <laughs> it's not funny, uh, but maybe it will be if I find the right angle. Jokes, you know, they're everywhere and then you never know when they're going to pop up. You know, they're conversations you hear on the bus. They're an old colleague who used to keep his value pack of Metamucil on his desk like it wasn't a big deal. A value pack. I couldn't get over it, wrote a joke about it, did it on TV. Now that joke pays my bills, which <laughs> is really weird. <laughs> Jokes, I think they can be anything. It's something funny your parents said. It's, it's childhood trauma, adult trauma, children you love, children you hate, being pregnant, trying to get pregnant. Jokes, they, they really can be anything. Uh, in, my, in my show this year, I started telling a joke about my older brother who, uh, during lockdown, attempted to start a trout farm in his backyard in an above-ground pool in his rental. <laughs> Which, of course, I knew about at the time, but I didn't, I didn't think to write about it because that's just... The Who's are a bit eccentric. I thought, yeah, that's just normal. Uh, and then, because I guess we all thought at the time the world was going to end and sometimes you can be too close to a joke. You have to take a step away. And time had passed. And, and when I spoke to him about the trout farm again, I thought, why isn't this story about my brother starting a trout farm in his backyard pool in my stand-up? It's too good not to include. You know, I, I know you have probably a lot of questions about the trout farm. I can't tell you the whole story. It goes for about 10 minutes. Um, but it was during lockdown and, and other, other people, you know, they were baking sourdough and doing puzzles. But my brother was thinking, where are you going to get your Omega-3s? That's, that's where he was at. And he bought, he bought about 20 trout from a farm two hours from Melbourne. And then he came back and, and drained his pool and then filled it with some tap water. <laughs> and then went to his local creek and, and got some river reeds uh, from, from the Darabin Creek in an attempt to mimic the trout's natural environment. <laughs> you know, just, just a few reeds to cover up the bright blue bottom of the pool. And then he just, he lobbed these fish in, hoping that they would procreate and he would become the Joss John West of Melbourne's North. Um, <laughs> Look, it goes, on. it goes on for another eight minutes. <laughs> but honestly, in my show this year, it was a big crowd pleaser in the show. And many people asked me after, like, is that true? Is the trout farm story true? I said, yeah, I can't make that up. How could I make... I can't make that up. But that story, that whole thing, that was art presenting itself to me, I think, on a very nice silver platter. Uh, the trout farm was definitely a gift from the comedy gods. And, you know, sometimes the jokes, uh, the idea, they're not like the trout farm. They're, they're a little bit harder 
to work out and every night of the week you'll find comedians in pubs or on the city's outskirts in big RSLs touring through regional theatres, we're in big city offices selling gags to corporates mid-conference, we're at speakeasies around midnight trying to engage the few left. We're constantly working out ways to give our hastily typed out notes some form of life, you know. We're on TikTok and Instagram, YouTube and podcasts. We write books and TV shows and speeches and ads and memes. It's all very highbrow. Uh, a, a lot of people, they call us brave. Uh, usually that happens right after a bad gig, uh, a bomb, you know, an audience member will come up and say, you're so brave, uh, which is code for you weren't very good, uh, but we admire your courage, keep at it. <laughs> you know, very rarely are, are we in fancy locations with bottled water and our names on a dressing room, although it's nice when that happens and, and rarely are we included in arts funding and if we apply for it, don't tell them you're a stand-up comedian. You're a performer. <laughs> but we don't care. We don't care. We're used to being paid 50 bucks to travel 50 kilometres to a pub on the outskirts of town so that when Gary looks up from his schnitzel, Someone is there to entertain him. You know, I will do that <laughs> for the community. <laughs> Look, the, the notes app or a comedian's notebook is, is a, a very dark and sacred place for a comic. Um, but I thought I'd, I'd open the vault. I, I want to read out some of my notes from my phone, my little joke seedlings, which I think is genuinely so brave uh, because these, <laughs> these notes aren't jokes yet. They're just weird thoughts and ideas that meant something to me at some point. Uh, are, you, are you okay with that, if I read these dark thoughts out? Okay, um, <laughs> see if you can make sense of these little seedlings. Um, just collected them from my phone. Dogs are the rising middle class. <laughs> You heard it here first, okay? I'm, I'm really obsessed with big bears following families on YouTube. Um, maybe, I don't know. All we, all we know about America is bad shit and how to barbecue your meats. Uh, mass shootings and how to get that ultimate smoky flavour on your brisket. Bit grim, could be funny, I don't know. <laughs> Just been to Bali, wrote a lot of notes there. Um, old surfer guy in front of me at beauty salon, getting his mullet washed and blow dried. He looked gorgeous. That's it. Uh, <laughs> this note just said, tree ethnic dad. And I remember, I remember looking back at that. I was like, yes, I know why I wrote that down. That's in reference to dad putting salt on a neighbor's tree to kill it. <laughs> that's, gotta, that's gotta be funny. Uh, barefoot budgeting lose, I don't know. Everyone hates each other, very profound. That was the note, that was all it was. COVID reminded me of the 90s. <laughs> Um, I may be too late for that one now, I don't know. I've even typed out random conversations I've heard at the pub. This one was from two very drunk friends back probably like in 2019. I just remember typing this out and the, the two guys talking to, to each other, you got gays in your life, Buffalo? I was like, what's going on here? You got gay friends? How many books have you published? The other one said, if you look up my name, you'll see with women and then the, one of them said, with women I become friends with them and then I become in love with them. And I was like, okay, that, that was the convo. That was never going to go anywhere, but I wrote it down and now I've just shared it with you and I regret it. Uh, <laughs> but sometimes, look, the notes do work. Uh, how's this one? This is the original note for the, the trout farm joke. Big bro trout farm, dot, dot, dot. Think of the kids who wanted to try fishing for the first time. He actually said that to me. Um, something they'd only heard about in the before years. <laughs> Darabin Creek weeds. <laughs> that was the original note. And it turned out to be a, a 10 minute joke. Uh, so yes, I guess art is everywhere. And maybe I am an artist. Am I art? I don't know. Is the failed trap farm art? I'm not sure, I'm not convinced, but thank you so much for listening to me and I hope you have a great night. Thank you, I'm listening.